Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Prince William is, as he often is, characterised as being furious at Harry. Well, what else is new? This time it's over the use of the 1995 Panorama interview with Princess Diana, which she agreed to do after being tricked by BBC reporter Martin Bashir. The Mirror reminds us William previously said it should never be aired again and thought it was the one thing he and his brother agreed on. A source said, Harry has blatantly gone against his wishes with the panorama footage. It shows just how little regard there is from the Sussex camp. William will be rightly furious about it. He couldn't have been clearer, and this is one thing he would have thought he and Harry were aligned on. It shows the gulf between them couldn't be wider. The invoking of Diana's memory and image appears to be a clicking point for many. A royal source asked the Telegraph, What was so bad in Harry and Meghan's life that it warrants making a comparison with Princess Diana? They seem to be equating her death with a few negative stories and gossip, placing it against images of a woman who was hounded in a different era of terrible media and died in a car crash. It's disgusting. A former royal butler took it up a notch, saying, Talk about exploiting the princess's image. And talk about showing images which William does not want to be seen again on television, there's bound to be conflict between the two boys. He also made his feelings quite clear, saying, Megan isn't Diana. Someone else who was never shy about making his opinions clear is Piers Morgan, who wrote in a piece that appeared in the New York Post. The most sickening part of this Netflix series is the constant use of Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, in absurd comparisons to his wife. Having known both women, I can say with certainty that they had absolutely nothing in common. Whereas Megan's compassion and empathy towards her father, who she disowned when he became a problem, and who recently suffered a massive stroke, she's not even bothered to call him to see how he is. Megan doesn't have a father, says Harry, who never met Thomas Markle. Yes, she bloody well does, and he brought her up on his own for years, notwithstanding his own mistakes for which he's apologised. The way they've both been treating him is appalling. As for their privacy, they spend the entire time revealing private text messages and intimate photos and home videos they made 20 months ago in clear preparation for this show. Esther Kraku for the Daily Mail writes, After flying in from Los Angeles by private jet, such eco-warriors, to the Robert F. Kennedy Ripple of Hope Award Gala in New York, an event where tickets sold for up to $1 million, they babbled drivel that would disgrace a GCSE student. Our hope, they simpered, is to inspire a new generation of leadership in the arts, where diverse up-and-coming talent have a platform to have their voices heard and their stories told. They went on to praise courage over fear and love over hate, and added, together we know that a ripple of hope can turn into a wave of change. That sentence sounds as though it was generated by a computer programmed with shallow cliches and claptrap. Seems to me that Harry and Meghan crave the global adulation that Princess Diana enjoyed, and Harry draws continual comparisons between his and Meghan's plight and that of his late mother. But in contrast to the Sussex, Diana turned her anger and sorrow to good use, forcing the world to listen when she talked passionately about AIDS and landmines. Harry and Meghan appear to believe passionately in nothing but themselves. They preach about poverty and live in their Montecito mansion with their thousand-pound Hermes blankets and Meghan's Louis Vuitton designer outfits. Palace and Drink will be right back. So far, the royals, the documentary hasn't been too bad, but one royal source told the Times that next week will be poison. One insider said, They even came over to mark Her Majesty's Jubilee while colluding with the filmmakers without telling her what they were doing. That's shameful and cowardly. There are a lot of people who are glad the late Queen is not here to see it. Us celebrity PR expert Jordan McCauley tells The Mirror, doesn't really matter what Harry and Meghan say in the documentary. The most important thing for Meghan and Harry right now is keeping their faces in front of audiences so they can launch successful products, brand deals and streaming projects later on. What better way to get and keep their faces in people's living rooms than Netflix? Their demographic already has a positive association with Netflix, which will carry over onto Meghan and Harry. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacentric at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite shows. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McClendon's Palace Intrigue and good times.